Hey, welcome back to another episode where today I'm in Northern Ireland and I'm here to see what I can learn from one of Northern Ireland's best electrical contractors. Let's get to it. So you might be wondering, why am I in Northern Ireland? And why am I holding an empty glass of Carlsberg in my hand? Well, the reason is, I got an email from a subscriber, and that's the first year apprentice, and they were saying to me, I don't understand power factors. What is it? Why does it make sense to me? Can't get my head around it. So I'm here to try and explain that to you, to show you the science behind it, and then a real world example. All right, let me show you. Would you be happy if you went to a pub, and this is what you got? Right here, a pint. I want a bit of a trigger warning here for the beer lovers. Ah, lovely. Would you be happy to pay for that? Uh, I'd be a bit annoyed if I had to pay for that. But that's what it is. So the glass, that is your unit that you're paying for. That's your electricity unit. But that's divided. So if your glass is KVA, that's your apparent power. That's what, that's what you're paying for. That's what you're getting. It's divided into actual useful power, which is your kilowatts. That's what you're happy with. And your KVAR, which is the useless stuff. That's what you don't want. And inside industry, you're going to get a mixture of both. If you have leading or lagging power factor, and that's when you've got a balance between your Henry's and your Farad's, or your, induct uh, your capacitance and your inductance. If you want to learn more about that, there's a video that explains the deeper engineering side of it. I'll put a link to it below because that's a really good video and it'll explain it much better than I can. But just for the get your head around it principle, that's basically the difference. So I'm teamed up today with uh, a company that have won Best Electrical Contractors in Ireland last year. And uh, they're very kindly going to be taking me out on a site where uh, they're surveying, they're doing power analysis to see if they can turn the power on site from that into that. So what does that mean for us today, practically? Well, I'm here with Adam. It's crack. And, uh, oh, that was a lovely little second camera thing there. We're upgrading the camera capabilities. Um, <laughs> but we're coming out here basically to actually show a worked example of why, why power analysis and power factors is important. So what you've got here is this big old 800 amp switch. You might have seen these underneath your houses, a very small version of it. Well, I guess one eighth the size usually. Um, mm -hmm. And this is just a main switch. So this is the NIE switch, it's the Northern Irish Electric Grid. And it comes into here through a bus bar chamber. So behind this, there'll just be a load of copper bars. And then that goes out through these subboards and they'll go off to their corresponding MCCB panels. One problem, this doesn't switch off. So Adam here has got the contract to replace this whole works. He's going to put in generator, backup, um, the whole works to replace this switch room, except at the minute he's not able to do that until you have an understanding of what the power on site is actually doing. So that's why we use power analysis to see what wasted power they have, to see if they can get it down, to see if they need power factor correction units put in, um, and also what size generator and things. But they've devised this to put in to actually switch it off. But trouble is, if we switch it off... It's not going back on. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got to do it live. So that's why I'm wearing my little flashy Oompa Loompa suit. Let's show, Let's you, inside, show you inside the Widowmaker. Right, suit up. So this is arc flash gear. So part of what that means is you have to make sure everything you're wearing underneath is cotton. So I've got my cotton panties on. Um, I've taken off any metal, any jewellery, anything that's likely to conduct. Because um, the trouble is polyester will, and plastic will melt and it will stick to you, which you don't want. Whereas natural things like cotton, that will just burn, which is what you want. You want it just to burn off you in the event. All right then, so if you just help me get the cover off. One, two, three. There we go. This is where someone comes out of the nail gun and does a very mean prank on you. Our power analyzer, or our data logger, is this up here. So this is connected through on crocodile clips um, onto the bus bar and also little CT clamps around each one of the incoming tails. See these crocodile clips here? clipped onto each phase in neutral. And then you've got these here, CT clamps rolled around each one of the uh, 
each one of the phases. These red cables here are going to go out to the generator supply, so that's why they're not actually HV. This is all LV in here, meaning it's below a thousand volts. I'll hand you back to the experts, and I'll get these disconnected and try not to poop myself. All right, so I'm going to disconnect these one at a time. go all disconnected so now very carefully put this back on I'm always more nervous putting the covers back on because I feel like I'm gonna rattle something loose and it's gonna fall inside and blow it up but no I think we're good if Boddington's want to send me some lovely insulated gear, then you know, feel free. Like, I won't say no. Right, so now what we can do is we get the spider's webs off of our face. We've got the data logger, so we can take this back to the office now and actually properly analyze the power. Just to, to reiterate, what this actual bus bar system's doing, this whole thing is doing this entire industrial, industrial estate. So it was a load of chicken farms, um, but all these chicken sheds have been turned into um, different various offices, garages, workshops, machine shops, etc. Now we've got inside this data logger here, we've got enough data to see what the general consumption profile for this whole place is. So if we decide we want to put in a generator or we want to put in solar or anything like that, we have a consumption profile so we know exactly what it is that we need. So, so I didn't mean to overreact about all the safety thing. I didn't realize that was a fire extinguisher. This is all massive overkill. That's so embarrassing. Egg on my face. This is basically just a really big version of that. Whew. Right, we're all done with that, thankfully, because yeah, that is very sketchy. I do not condone live working at all. Um, if you are working live, obviously you have to have a risk assessment. You need your PPE. We tried our best there. Um, especially on a system like that, it's even more sketchy because there is no protective device upstream and there's nothing that's going to trip or break to protect you. Usually, at least if you're live working in a house or something and there's an RCD upstream, you have something that's going to hopefully save your life, your life, your life, your life. It's a sad and all but too common situation. One that I think we can all fairly say we found ourselves in. You're there, chilling on the sofa, trying to enjoy your Irish electrical magazine, when out of nowhere, a man with a gun comes and tries to kick your back doors in. <laughs> there are a lot of electrical manufacturers out there that claim to provide products that will protect you and your family and keep you safe. So that's why I'm here, to put that to the test, so you don't have to. Okay, so what I've got here is a variety of electrical products that claim to save your life. but. How can we really know that unless someone like me goes and puts it to the test for you? So I've got all these breakers in here, a few RCBOs, some uni light, some smoke detectors. This thing, people talk about these being tough. How tough are they? Are they going to stop a bullet? I don't know. I didn't see it in the manufacturer's paperwork, did you? Well, Only one way to find out. Yeah, and you're welcome. So Brian here has uh, volunteered to be our backstop just to uh, check, make sure we don't have anything actually come through. Let's get to it. Let's go and shoot some stuff. Let's do this. You're just daddy long legs getting in there. <laughs> About nine foot tall, so. All right, oh, no, live, live uh, round here, so. Nice. All right. Bye bye, RCD socket. <laughs> bye bye, RCBO. Oh, got a bit four of them there. Yeah, four for one, mate. I don't want to mess around. Safety, and safety's involved. You got to take it seriously. All right, let's try and hit that smoke alarm and not your box. I think we proved our point. Got to check on Brian. Let's see if Brian's getting their tape. Shoot that board a few times. He's just shut the door. Oh, let's go through it. Oh, yeah, yeah, look. Stop behind it, look. 
tr it will save your life. <laughs> I was trying to hit the test button. Didn't kind of chip the whole way through. Smack on the old test button. Oh my gosh, that's uh, that's impressive. So far in the home invasion scenario, this you're fine. Unilite, you're fine. Anything else, mate, you're dead. That's going straight through. So let's go to the finals. For the finals, we're going to be putting this against the Unilite. I think that's going to be the best way to, to tell it. Let's say if the Unilite turns off, then we know it's not going to work. The thing is, we can't guarantee they're going to have a Ruger rifle, can we? Could be a shotgun. Could be a shotgun. Could be. I reckon we nip down to Tesco's and see if we can uh, get hold of a shotgun. There we go, that Tesco's in Belfast. All right, sweet. We'll be right back. Okay. Back on Tesco's, wasn't it? Oh, mate, I'll tell you what, they're not as quick as LV, but they're getting better. I find all the yeah. kind of induces anxiety in me. They're a bit too quick. I don't have time to get my bags ready. Um, right, so we're ready for round two. We've got hold of the shotgun. We're down to the finals. Um, distribution board versus Unilite. I think we say if this has holes in the back of it, then this is lost. If this stops working, because the thing is you could kind of shriek in this. There's the potential that you could throw it, frisbee like a discus? it. I see him about to shoot you. I throw it. With the obviously with years of training. Oh, I'm not yeah. talking like I understand. Before you start hating in the comments, I understand this is gonna take years of practice. But I could throw this, stop the bullet, and save your life. So if this stops working. You, no, you definitely have to be good at throwing. And if you weren't James out there, you definitely chuck out a girl. I borrowed, borrowed these off my girlfriend on the way here. Yeah, sorry man. <laughs> It was either these or their HV trousers, which I was getting a bit I'm sweaty. sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do you want to haul it and I'll try and... Let's go. All right. Ready? Let's do it. Why, why have you got so many bullets? Uh, we brought 50. Mate, it's a bit... Oof. Let's see. All right. As second shot. Mate, if I can get this on my second shot, second throw, then I'll buy it. the beers tonight. You can keep it. Yeah. <laughs> Are you All ready? Right. Ready? We're good? Oh! Okay, well, it's still on, but I did say second hole, didn't I? You skimmed it? I'll give you that. It's I skimmed it. Skimmed it. Nice. Oh, yeah. Mate, I didn't skim it. That's a direct hit. That's a direct hit in Definitely my book. Skim. All day long. Like, all day long. I mean, it's still on. That's pretty. You'll need more rounds. Definitely skimmed it. Nah, all right, go on. <laughs> you lob it again, and we'll have it again. Hole. Oh, Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Are you all right? I'm so sorry. That's an amateur move right there. It's still on. Did I hit Mate. it? Again? I hit it. Hit the front of it. This oh, you got it there too. Flip. I got it both times, and it's still on. That's not bad going. So he's hit it in the front section along here. Still on. On the back. I hit it the both times. Proper hardcore stuff. I like. I want that for my wall. That is so cool. But imagine trying to explain that to passport control heading back. Sorry, I uh, ah, came I from Belfast and... Uh, shoot to me yeah, now. Just some, yeah, just some... Just some shot now. If you want to buy this torch, then the first one to get it can have it. But the money from it will go to charity. So you have to go to Tall Monster below and you can be the first one to... Here, look, it's touched Adam. <sighs> Don't so, watch it ever. Come on, ladies. Come buy this torch. Money will go to charity. Unilight torch test. Let's go. <laughs> so I might as well empty the round. Right, let's see what the damage is. It's still on. No way. What? It's still on. It's literally got a bullet straight through the center of the lens. Look, I'll turn it off. Look, bullets have gone through. You can hear it all sloshing around. And it's still on, that is, I reckon that's taken enough of a punishment now. Well, today is a day where we have, where we're all winners. If you want to stop a bullet, you want to save your family's life in the event of a home invasion, and all you can use them as an electrical product, then both this Unilite and this Gary board will both suffice. Thank you for watching. Come back soon for more torture tests. <laughs> Sorry, um, yeah, but, but in this situation, there is nothing. If you touch that, you're dead. That's why they call it the Widowmaker. I'm not even married, that's even sadder. There's no one that's even gonna miss me. It's the, no one will miss you maker you just be dead with four or five youtube videos out there pretty tragic in it let's get back to the pub before i get too upset right so we're back in the pub and uh 
My beer is settled lovely. Oh, all your foam's disappeared. Uh, I'm messing some here. So Adam, what is this machine? Why do you use it? Okay, so this is the Fluke Energy Logger. What this does, it analyzes all your energy which, come, which is being used in that building. Uh, it gives you your kilowatt hours, your KV, or sorry, your kilowatts, your KVAR, your power factor. It gives you everything from over, we've done this one over a seven day period. Um, yeah, and basically it gives you what time of day it's been used, what maximum, the minimum. It gives us a full picture of what power usage is in the building. Amazing. And um, why do you need to know that data? What's important? Basically, we'll take this uh, data uh, and advise your client on their next steps. Uh, basically, we want to take their energy that comes into the building from this and we did this. So, basically, you want to make their building more efficient. So, I'll skim through this power profile on here, right? So you see there, we've got the kilowatts. So that's our, that's our actual beer that's left over. That's our useful power. So we can see a total reading there. If you go on the table, you can see what they've been pulling. Um, but then, this is where it gets interesting and relevant. So we've got our KVA, okay? So this is our apparent power. This is the units that we're paying for. This is one beer glass. And that is 93.2. But let's compare that to our KVAR, our foam, the useless power. 79.9 average which is insane as a total. So that means almost 0.5%, if we check our power factor, it's about half. Yeah, 0.51% power factor, which means almost half of that glass is foam, useless power. So that's where you'd come in with your capacitor yeah. banks. And PC will advise this client to put in a, uh, a power factor correction box in, uh, and that'll then use capacitors to uh, bring that load in line and basically move it from this to this. So if you're leading or you're lagging basically, yeah, capacitance right. or inductance, it will pull it straight for yeah. you. I'm not going to go too in depth on that because if you want to learn more, that kind of bridges more into engineering, electrical engineering, which there's a video below which I've tagged, which explains it much better than I can in a lot more detail. And that's fascinating. So I guess the gist of it is you're needing to learn about power factors because especially in the industrial and commercial environment if you're sizing a generator if you're doing anything like that you're talking efficiency mainly it's all about efficiency and it's all and especially in our current energy climate it's all about how to maximize your yeah. power yeah because if you need kilowatts and half of its foam you're going to need twice as much demand you're going to be burning out your service means cables you're and cables you're getting exactly. a new income and supply there's all different factors and if you're burning diesel if you're doing it off generators then that comes into effect as well you know amazing twice as much power needed 0.5 percent so i hope that answers your question for you um mr viewer and uh, if you've got any more questions any of you please comment below and i'll try my hardest obviously i can't answer everything and this one was a little bit of a tricky one to actually make an interesting video so i hope i've done it justice and i hope i've made it clear for you um i want to thank adam very very much for having me yeah, that's good i've been able to go around on a few jobs with him i've been picking his brain which has been really interesting he owns ag electrical and tool monster so busy guys so i appreciate you making time to uh great to have you make a video for everyone as well so thank you very much and uh i'll see you on the next one